Listen to how stable this vocal sounds like by using only the Cubase stock compressor. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping we could give a good review. And so we're trying now. Now there's two compressors, one set up to peak mode and the other one to RMS mode. What's the difference? Let's find out. Lots of people underestimate the power of stock plugins and the Cubase standard compressor plugin is probably one of them. But I'm telling you for a stock compressor plugin, there's lots you can do with it. Let's go check it out. In Cubase, if we look at the stock compressor, we have this guy here called the analysis. Now this is a knob that lots of people are confused about. And I'm gonna focus on this one today. By default, it's set up to 80% and you have the choice between peak level and RMS level. That means that the compressor will react according to that parameter, you know, according to the peak level or the RMS level of the signal coming into the compressor. So let's have a quick listen. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping we could go. All right. So what I'm going to do here, let me bring that down to, I don't know, let's say 30 milliseconds for the release time, uh, very fast attack time, four to one ratio. Let's deactivate the softening. I'm going to come back to that later. Uh, and I'm going to keep that to peak level and we'll switch between peak and RMS level so you get an idea on how it sounds like. Mm, and we're hoping we could Okay, I'm over compressing right now. A good review. Bring that to RMS. And so we're trying out this mini K67. Maybe find a way to make it sound as close to heaven. Check the highs and lows. Okay, so as you can tell, we're getting less compression when the knob is set up to RMS. I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, let me open Supervision and show you a visual between peak level and RMS level on the same vocal. Mm -hmm. and we're hoping we okay, could so now as you can see, a good review. that blue line right here on the meter determines the peak level. So that is the maximum level of the signal. Mm -hmm. And then the darker side of the metering a good that is the average level, the RMS level. So basically the RMS level is a kind of an average between the quietest part of the signal and the loudest part of the signal. So by putting the analysis to peak, the compressor will react according to the peak level, getting into the compressor's detector circuit. And if the analysis is set up to RMS, now the average level uh, will be detected by the compressor and that compressor will react according to that average level. And with the Cubase compressor plugin, you can balance that out between peak and RMS. So how can you apply this in a mixing situation? You're going to ask me. All right, so let's go back to our vocal, activate the compressor. And what I'm going to do for this technique is to use two compressors on my lead vocal, something that I do a lot when mixing vocals. So I'm going to use one compressor uh, to just tame down the peaks of the vocal signal. And the second compressor will focus more on level up the whole vocal sound okay, and not focus only on the peaks. And this is how I do it. I usually use an 1176 as a peak compressor. So on the stuck Cubase compressor, analysis is going to be to peak, uh, 30 milliseconds for the uh, release time, attack time very fast, the fastest possible because I just want to tame down those peaks right away. Four to one ratio and I make sure that the soft knee is deactivated. So it's a hard knee instead. You're gonna ask me, okay, what is the difference between soft and hard knee? Let's go check it out briefly. I'm gonna open the Fab Filter Pro C2, which visually um, does the job pretty well for this type of a tutorial. So I have the choice between hard knee, and as you can tell, a hard knee uh, is when is at the threshold point. So it just means that the compressor will start compressing at the uh, threshold point. If I bring the knee to soft, now you can see that it's way softer at the threshold point and the compressor starts reacting gradually before the threshold point. Okay, so this is a soft knee. So it's gonna end up to a more softer type of compression. Uh, now on this compressor, we have a variable um, hard and soft knee parameter, which is quite nice. Uh, but on the Cubase compressor, we have a, a on or off basically. You activate the soft knee or you deactivate 
activate the soft knee and that turns the knee to hard. I'm gonna keep it to hard for this compressor because again, I want it to react very fast. Now, if you're confused and you're struggle with compression, I'm gonna encourage you to download my free guide, The Fundamentals of Compression. The link is down below. And this is what I get. I'm just gonna tame down the peaks by aiming for a couple of dBs of gain reduction. Mm, and we're hoping we could give a good review. And so we're trying that's it, now. That's all I do. This mini K67 maybe find a way. So it's not always compressing. It's just going to compress the peaks. Now I'm going to add a second compressor, which again is going to be the stuck Cubase compressor. And this time around, this one will focus on leveling up the whole vocal sound by bringing the analysis to RMS. So this way, the average level of the vocal signal will trigger the compressor and not the peaks. Okay, so I'm going to keep that smooth. I'm going to make sure that the uh, soft knee is active. Uh, bring the uh, ratio to 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, 8, 10 milliseconds of attack time. 60 milliseconds for release time. Um, and yeah, let's see how that goes. Mm, and we're hoping we could give a good review. And right. so we're trying now. Okay, so we have the first compressor. Let me bring it right here. The first compressor is taking care of the peaks and the second compressor is taking care of the general level. Mm, and we're hoping we could give a good review. And so we're trying now. This mini K67 maybe find a way Make it sound as close to heaven. Check the highs and lows. Okay, you can tell when I bypass both compressors, the dynamics gets pretty unstable. So that's a good way to bring your vocal sound a bit more upfront, way more controlled, and also to add a very nice compression color to your vocal sound. And you don't need to be very aggressive, you know? Since you're sharing the compression load using two compressors, you don't need to add lots of gain reduction on each each compressors. So it keeps a very nice transparent compression sound and that works pretty well for vocals. You just need to understand how it works and you're good to go. Now if you want to know more about mixing vocals, I'm going to leave the link to my complete guide to mix vocals like a pro right here and down below. Leave me your questions down below if you enjoyed this video, share and like, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Until next time, take care and see you.